Hi, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra, and I want to do a quick video on entry points into Docker containers and also on uh, trapping signals and handling shutdowns. So we're going to make a directory where we call it EP test. We're going to touch a Docker file and touch an entry point.sh. And we're going to make that file executable and basically when we start up a, a container you'll notice that many of the official images out there the published images have entry points and those are shell scripts or however you want to do it that execute when the container gets started many times co containers have complicated things that need to happen after they get started perhaps you need to connect to uh, some other service to make it known that you're live or you need to in cases of databases you need to set up files and you might need to start several processes up at the same time and so that is what our entry point file does and you can do things uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's I would go look at a bunch of examples in the github images out there the github docker images uh, and just see the entry points that are out there you can do things like uh, if you know the the first argument is is you know some uh, you know if it's if it has some string then you execute this command if it doesn't have a string you execute another command we can check for environmental variables. Uh, WordPress does this where it checks to see if certain environmental variables are set up. If they're not set up, it exits, all that kind of, of thing. So we're going to do a very simple one to show you what it is. And I'm just going to say echo hello world and save this. And we're also going to look at our doc. <laughs> this is where we're going to do a shell command, not the Docker file. And it's going to be bin bash. And once again, this is just going to be hello world. And inside of our Docker container, we're going to delete all this bad code now and say from Debian maintainer dark zebra. And we're going to, first of all, add the entry point file that we just created. And remember to make sure that it's an executable, that it has uh, execute permissions on it. We're going to add to slash code slash entry point dot sh. We're going to make our working directory slash code. And then, of course, we have an entry point entry inside of our Docker file. And this will basically say every time you run this program, you run every time you instantiate this container, you will run this entry point. And you have to explicitly override it if you don't want to use the one built by the image maintainer. And so I'm going to say dot, and it's going to be based on your working directory. So we're going to say entry point dot sh. It's a very simple image here. And we are going to build this, call it dark zebra EP test. And because I already have the Debian image, it's really quickly. It works really quickly. And I'm going to say docker run dash it dash dash remove. And I don't need to pass in the command, although I could. If I typed in something here, it would get passed in as the arguments to that entry point. But because I have it set up, I'm just going to run this. And I get a hello world. Really, really simple. The problem is, is when the entry point finishes executing, it stops. And when it stops, the container stops. So my container is no longer running. 
I do have a Docker or a Mongo one running. If I go back into my file here, the way I can keep it something running is by basically doing a process. So I can, for instance, start up a service. Um, there's all kinds of scripts out there to manage background processes, to keep things running. But the really simple thing is you can either tail something like varlog, syslog, or, or messages. Or for instance, you can also just do a while loop, while true, do, and then a, a done. And you just put in something like sleep, you know, 60 minutes. And that basically is an infinite loop that isn't going to take up a lot of resources and it will just keep it running. So I could start up and background a bunch of processes and then and then just loop on this tailing a file or just looping and what you'll see now when I rebuild this image is that my container does not immediately exit I have to hit control C and it finishes so we've learned one extra thing but what, what happens if I need to set up something? For instance, I need to lock a file or I need to open a connection to something else. Or basically, I just have to, I can right now do a setup process, but I have no ability to do a teardown process. And this is where signal trapping is going to come in. And right now, I'm going to show you the way that does not work. And that's just to say something like echo goodbye. Because when I hit control C, it's going to exit my program right here and it's never going to get to this echo goodbye and I'll show you that quickly by rebuilding this and then rerunning it so I'm, I'm in my loop right now I hit control C I don't get any goodbye it never hits that code so how do we get this code to execute first of all well we need to use what's called a signal trap and this is a bash thing uh, what I'm covering today is going to be in bash there are ways to do it in Python and Ruby and everything but right now we're just going to worry about this uh, first of all we're going to define a function and we're going to call it teardown and in here we're going to move our code which is echo goodbye now, this goodbye code, this teardown code, can be anything you want it to be. It can clean up files, remove lock files, close database connections, whatever it is. I recently did one where it will actually notify another appliance that it is removing, and, and then that appliance will remove it automatically and remove it from the list of available resources. Now, having that function there, doesn't do us any good. This is where we need to insert our trap. We should do this at the top of the file here, or really close to the top, and say trap. Our function name. And then we have basically three signals we want to catch. Sig int, sig hub, and sig term. And these are the different these are the different signals that are sent to the shell script when you hit control C, when the machine says it's going down for shutdown, when, when something gets terminated, these are the ones that happen. They're, they're a healthy way to shut down. So what happens is Linux sends signals, all the things that are listening trap those signals and then run through their closing processes. And then, we can't forget this, they need to exit. If we don't exit, it will not, never exit until I actually kill it. There is a fourth signal called sig kill, but you can't catch it. You can't trap it. It is meant to override when things go bad. And if, for instance, I didn't have an exit zero here, I would never actually exit my program. And that would mean I would have to explicitly kill it. So what we're doing here is we're saying trap our argument of, of the function we're calling and then the signals we're going to be trapping. You can also pass in something like 
uh, a string that says rm-rf star don't actually pass that in but that would give you an opportunity to do that you can just pass in a string with the command or you can pass in a point uh, a function and so we're now going to build this and we are going to run it once again I get hello world it's just sitting there waiting I hit control C and now I get my goodbye so just remember entry points are very important for your images if you need to connect if you need to set up and if you need to tear down and also understand how you can trap signals and call other functions to clean up files after you're done that is really all I got really simple today but uh, please have give any comments or questions you might have if you want to see certain topics covered please leave a comment and uh, subscribe to our video and uh, our channel and rate our video if you like it. Thanks and have a good day. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.